Hi, welcome to PTI. This will be a demonstration of how to install a 75 watt zine in an arc lamp. Whenever handling the arc lamps, it's always important to wear uh, eye protection, like uh, plastic uh, goggles. The arc lamp is contained in this uh, shipping box, here, and on the outside are set screws, uh, a bag of set screws for to plug up the nitrogen holes, uh, flow through holes here, and also three small set screws for the lamp. We'll do that later. Handling the arc lamp, you can open it up but leave it in the styrofoam uh, container until you're ready to uh, put it into the housing. Uh, you need a number one Phillips screwdriver to remove the six screws on holding the lamp housing back plate in. plate straight out of the lamp housing like that. Okay. When shipped, the anode cooler is tied uh, back to the mounting post with a little tie wrap so that it doesn't flop around and scratch the reflector. I can just pull that off and then remove that and set that aside on the table. It's uh, while well you get the uh, set screws out of the small plastic bag. Uh, there's a large plastic bag. You take out the small plastic bag from the inside, and that contains the uh, set screws for the lamp. There are three set screws. One is an extra. Use two of them. Use a 50, thou 50 thousandths inch uh, Allen key, and just hold that in place, and put one set screw in the uh, 75 watt cathode adapter, and just have to screw it in so that it's uh, held in. You're going to be tightening up later when the lamp is in place. Put another, a second set screw in the end of the anode adapter. Now when you're doing that, pick that up, leave the anode adapter free. When you are installing the arc lamp, pick it up by the metal ends only. Do not touch the glass, so you only use the metal ends. Place it carefully through, through the uh, hole in the reflector, like this, and into the catheter adapter. You want the evacuation nib here aligned with the notch in the, in the uh, reflector collar. So once that's done, then you tighten up the set screw in the catheter adapter. Just tighten it up securely. At this point, uh, it's best to hold the, uh, the lamp uh, backplate so that the reflector is between the lamp and your face so that if there is an ex explosion, uh, your face is shielded by the bulk of the reflector. So just then put, the, uh, put the anode cooler on top of the thing. And it may be hard to focus straight on, so you can just wiggle it back and forth as you're easing it on like that. And you want the end of the anode cooler to be flush with the end of the lamp. And, and also the anode cooler to be right down the center of the notch in the reflector collar. The reflector collar is this gold collar at the back of the reflector. When that's done, turn the lamp back plate around. Put the Allen key in the anode cooler notch and turn it around and just make sure that the uh, the anode cooler is still aligned with it and then just tighten it up loose. Just tighten it up with a little bit of finger pressure. If you put um, really tighten it up there's a danger that you're putting too much stress on the lamp and you can um, stress it and break it which would cause an explosion in the lamp. So you just want um, thumb and forefinger uh, pressure to turn the uh, the Allen key, and that is sufficient. Make sure that uh, none of the um, wires or anything are outside the edge of it. So just tuck the uh, the rubber tubes, which are cooling. The the 75 watt xenon lamp does not require water cooling. The tubes are just set there for gen general purpose for any kind of lamp. Just tuck them in. Make sure this wire is in there, and then you put it in. Put it in 
straight into the back of the lamp housing. And it will just sit there. Then you can put the um, Phillips uh, screwdrivers, uh, Phillips screws back in. This is the uh, LPS 221B igniter. It has two shielded uh, connectors on the bottom there, which fit into the two socket connectors on the lamp housing. It also has a little protector switch here, which is just, you can press it in like that, and that is a uh, default switch that is if it's not pushed down for sufficiently it will not ignite the lamp. And there's a thumb screw at the front that you uh, push down and screw into this hole in the lamp housing. Okay, These are a very tight fit so be careful when you're inserting the, um, the connectors into the socket just don't jam, jam it in. Just place them carefully until they actually fit in. Then push, push down on it. You may have to rock side to side a little bit like this as you're pushing down. And then uh, push down on the thumb screw and turn it. And it turns three to four turns uh, fully, fully down like that. Another cable comes bundled up. Uh, just unwind it like that. Notice that there are two ends: one a male end, and one a female end. The female end of the cable connects to the male end on the igniter, and just uh, ro rotate uh, rotate it until you feel that it pops in. Then you can turn the black uh, plastic uh, connector on the front and it secures it in place. Take the male end of the cable, plug it into the female connector on the igniter connector on the back of the LPS 220B power supply and again rotate it until you feel it pop in. Then you can turn the black plastic uh, ring on it and turn that in so it's uh, locked securely in place. Turn the uh, connect the uh, power cord into the power socket like this. Just push it in. Okay. On the back of the power supply is a toggle switch labeled ignite, which can either be set to auto or to manual. And the f igniter fuse is below he here, and the fuse for the whole lamp power supply is in this little behind this little sliding plastic door. You have to pull the plug out to get access to that fuse. When you uh, first set up a uh, arc lamp, it's preferable to have the display knob on watts and the current knob at about 12 o'clock position on a clock face. Then you uh, push the power switch in and watch the display. Oh. The uh, toggle ignite toggle switch on the back has been set to auto. Uh, the lamp will ignite by itself in um, ten, anywhere up to 20 seconds, quite often uh, 3 or 4 seconds. If the uh, toggle switch on the back has been set to manual, then you need to press down the ignite button and hold it down until, until you notice that it has ignited. In ignition, you will hear a faint click from the lamp and you'll also notice a, a, a large fluctuation in the, in the uh, display. It will shoot up to um, over uh, 100 watts for a split for a very th um, for a moment, and then settle down back to its uh, normal operating range. Once you've got that, it takes about uh, 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes for the lamp to warm up to its uh, uh, operating range. And even after five minutes, even after a couple of minutes, you can start increasing the current or adjusting the current. So. As I adjust the current here, you'll see that the current changes here. And what you would uh, initially set it at is set it at about uh, 5 watts below 75, or whatever your operating range is. Set it uh, for a 75 watt lamp, set it at about 75 or 70 watts. And after 15 minutes, you can readjust this to have it set and stable at 75 watts.
when the current is at 75 watts, a new lamp should have a voltage, display a voltage of about 12 to 12.5 volts. And a very old, uh, as the lamp ages, the volts applied to across the uh, arc lamp increases remarkably, and an old lamp is has a display 13.5 to 14 volts or higher. And you can also look at the amps display. A new lamp will have a uh, current of about uh, 6 to 6.3 amps. As to keep the watts at 75 watts, as the volts increase, the current, the current, the amps will decrease.